Welcome to the Music Production Podcast. This is Brian Funk, aka Afro DJ Mac. And today I have on the line Thomas Slav from bedroompreducersblog.com, which is basically um, an online blog for bedroom producers. It's specifically geared towards them and um, lots of uh, great goodies and resources for people, especially people just starting out, but also people that are kind of doing it on a budget. And for me, it's always been a great resource for samples or plugins and just cool gear that's coming out. So let's say hello. H- how you doing, Tomislav? What's going on? Hey, hello, Brian. How are you, man? Uh, thanks for uh, the invitation, and I'm very glad to be part of your podcast. Thanks, man. Um, it's great to talk to you, too. Um, I want to thank you as well, because um, you've been so supportive of all my work. Oh, and you years. as well. Yeah, I mean... I. I always uh, see posts about my stuff on your site, and I, that's always awesome for me. Because I, when I was, uh, you know, as I mean, really, still to this day, like I use your site a lot. So it's pretty fun yeah, to thanks. see the stuff about what I'm doing on your site. So I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I would also like to congratulate you on hitting the 150 mark uh, <laughs> on your uh, free series. I mean, uh, I started following it from the beginning, I think, from the very first ones, and it's amazing to release uh, to release more than 150 of them, and they're all great. So, congrats, man! Thanks. Great job. Yeah, well, I owe a little bit of that to you too, because we've collaborated a little bit. We did the uh, yeah. The there Game Boy drums yeah. and uh, oh yeah, that was great. Yeah, the glitch Game Boy sounds too. I I believe um, quite a few cool things, and uh, you've got a great collection of free samples for people to download too. Yeah, which... I kind of kind of stopped doing it recently, not because I uh, don't want to sample any more stuff. I just don't have the time to do it, and it's one of the things that, that I really enjoy doing. Actually, sampling like mm-hmm. uh, little. Uh, game boys or whatever so hopefully there will, there will be more in the days to come but hopefully i find find time to do more yeah it's definitely pretty painstaking i can tell yeah. you from experience it, it takes uh, <laughs> quite a bit of time to make a sample pack so yeah mm-hmm. yeah but it's fun i love the um you've also got these uh cassette uh 808 or 909 yeah. 606 stuff going yeah those, those are machines. my favorites yeah yeah i use yeah, those the, all the, the time yeah, th- those samples uh, were originally provided by other people. They recorded uh, clean samples of mm-hmm. their uh, 808s, 909s. Uh, every pack has a different creator. And then I uh, asked, them for, ex- asked them for permission to record them to cassette and then resample. And uh, I think they, they sound great. So uh, a bit lo fi and crunchy and noisy, but very, very nice. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. A lot of character to them. Yeah. I, I've i noticed, I guess, a theme in some of your sample packs for sort of like the lo-fi, um, almost toys sometimes. And um, yeah, it's 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 uh, because of two reasons. The first is that I like that sort of stuff. And of course, I love it. And the second is that I don't have any real, really high end <laughs> gear. <laughs> so I sample what I have. But yeah, the, the my favorite things in the world are like the uh, when it comes to instruments are those uh, video game sounds. I mean, it's always something I like hearing. And my most favorite, my single favorite instrument is the. Uh, it, as crazy as it sounds, the the seed chip in the Commodore sixty four computer. Yeah, I mean it sounds absolutely great, and I I love it. So I sampled it like I don't know many many times, and hopefully I'll do more samples of it. Yeah, it's a great sounding chip, and just nostalgia attached to it. Yeah, yeah. when I hear it, and I think probably video game sounds were the thing that got me into synthesis because yeah. I realized one day like a square wave that that sounds like a Nintendo <laughs> and yeah, exactly I was just blown away like it was just these simple waveforms the triangle wave the square wave and the noise and yeah. from there you know everything else followed but I was just like I was thrilled when I would open up a basic, you know, any synthesizer and just put in a basic square wave. And I'd be like, wow, yeah. it sounds like Nintendo. I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. know what you mean. I mean, uh, even though I have like, I don't know how many VST plugins and I also have some hardware stuff now. I, I've recently 
finally bought the Minitor, for example. Mm, Always nice. wanted to hear it. But even af- after like playing with synths for like 10 years, I, I still enjoyed that just raw waveform sound of the saw wave or the pulse wave or just those waves. I mean, I'm not a big fan of complicated patches. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, and they're so, certainly not yeah. very complicated. It's basically yeah, like the initial setting on, yeah. <laughs> on a lot and of it, like and it always sounds amazing for me so yeah yeah, yeah i've got um one of uh my favorite little toys i have is called the midi ness which is oh it's actually a nintendo cartridge but it's yeah, got a midi like cable coming out of it oh cool. and i guess programmed on the cartridge is some sort of rom that um it it's a very basic user interface for interacting with like the waves and stuff and uh it's kind of like weird to control especially you can do it with the the actual nintendo control but you can also send midi messages to it but it allows you to access the nintendo sound card the five channels that Mm. are on there you get two pulse wave the triangle the noise and there's a sample channel cool and it's i mean it's just amazing sounding like you said like it's just it's got such a raw grittiness to it and i've got my nintendo hooked up to my commodore 64 monitor it's actually my older brother's commodore 64 monitor and coming out of that little speaker it it just sounds really cool yeah (laughs) nice i'm gonna have to do some nintendo commodore hybrid yeah yeah yeah. and i actually have the exact same thing but for the commodore it's called the Oh, I forgot. You haven't used it in a while, but it's Messiah. Messiah. Mm-hmm. It's a cartridge which you put inside the Commodore's cartridge yeah. slot. And it it uh, loads uh, like software synths on the Commodore, but it uses the C chip. So it's basically like using plugins on your Commodore. But oh, wow. you, you get that. Auth- yeah. And you get that authentic sound, but you have the software to control it. And you like control the, the knobs with a joystick. Uh-huh. which you normally play games with and it's yeah. crazy but the thing that i'll receive in a few days and i order it uh, uh some time ago is called therapsid and mm-hmm. it's a hardware synth which uh, comes with a c chip so finally i'll have some real knobs and uh, oh, controls yeah. for the c chip yeah really looking for, forward to so it so that's a hardware synth with the actual sid chip in it yeah yeah it comes shipped with the, the chip inside what's that called uh, Therapsid. It now it's now the the Mark II version is is hmm. uh, in production and will will be released like very soon. Oh, that's cool. I don't remember the company name, but the the product is Therapsid Mark II. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. I gotta look that up. <laughs> yep. yep. Sounds like a good time. I've got um the Soulsby at Megatron. Are you familiar with that? Uh, no. Uh, it's it's a digital eight bit synth. Oh, cool. Um. I wonder if I can kind of show you here. I'm trying to like pull it out here to just hold it up to the screen mm-hmm. for you. But it's just this little tiny thing that sits on your desktop. And uh, Oh, it looks nice. Oh, I think, yeah, definitely. I, I've seen it. Yeah, I feel yeah. like you probably have, you know, with all the coverage mm-hmm. you do on your site. And it's a cool little box. Um, it's so gritty and dirty sounding. And there's so many filters and um, uh, wave shapes you can do with them. Um, so it's cool. not just like 8-bit saw wave, sine wave kind of stuff. It's all kinds of waves. And some of them sound pretty gnarly. Cool. Um, but what he, the guy that does it, um, whose name is Soulsby, he's got, it's Arduino-based. Ardru, Arduino. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think something mean. like that. <laughs> yeah. And um, he comes out with like new uh, programs you can load into it. You just get mm-hmm. the special cable. And... Um, there's a drum machine, there's a delay, one with like a delay effect on it. There's an ARP Odyssey emulation, oh, a nice. string machine, and it's all 8-bit. So it's, cool. it's just really, really cool. It's, um, you know, it's one of those things like when you buy it, you know, you get like all of these things that keep coming out and keep making your purchase more and more valuable. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a live product in a sense that yes. it gets better with time. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's evolving, it it's growing. Yeah, yeah, he's doing all, all kinds of modular stuff right now. That seems to be like the focus mm-hmm. for the company, um, 
which I've never really gotten into too far. I'm a little scared too. <laughs> yeah, but how, how how do you control it with uh, because uh, when you showed it now it looked uh, yeah. small and without uh, too many knobs. So how would you control, uh, for example, a modular? Uh, well, no, this doesn't. This one's not really for the modular. This just has MIDI in and MIDI oh. out, and you just hook it up to your DAW or your keyboard. Um, and what? And how do you control the parameters? Do you have like a software panel or? Uh... No, it's all on board. Um, oh, yeah, it's got what six knobs up top, and yeah, yeah. you can, if you see on it, like they're labeled mm -hmm. red on the top and green on the bottom. You push yep. this little button here, and it turns. This button goes from red to green, and then the functionality of the knobs change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and that's yeah. kind of pretty much it. And these two knobs are—it's a very interesting layout. Where on one of these like white knobs, you turn it to the thing you want to control, and then you set mm -hmm. the value with the other knob. Oh, nice! It's sort of like analog menu diving, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's not. It's nothing like, you know, some some things you have where you got a menu dive, it's ridiculously annoying and not even fun. But this is really fun. Like you just kind of dial in what you want to control and then you select the value. And that, yeah, that nice. knob actually goes from red to green also. So there's mm -hmm. really like um, a whole two layers to the, each knob. So it's pretty, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to control and it's there's a lot you can do with it. And each program nice. you load onto it, the knobs totally change. So he puts out these overlays you can cut out and just lay on top of the oh. thing. You print them out, you cut them right out, and just sweet. It's got all the like uh, labeling for the stuff you need. Great Sounds product. Cool. I mean, uh, that's uh, you know, I fully endorse that. I love it. I've had so much fun with it. Nice, good eight bit stuff. You know. <laughs> yeah, always love it. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. I mean, it sounds sounds great, so I look into it for sure. Yeah, yeah, they're doing like a lot of modular stuff now with different. Um, uh, I don't even know. I mean, like I said, I've only kind of tinkered like once or twice with the modular set, and uh, as cool as it is, I'm just uh, scared that I'm gonna put my life savings into it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, I know what you mean. I uh, I was like a software guy for. Uh, for a very long time and uh, i bought a few scenes occasionally uh second hand like sometimes some older like vintage stuff that was cheap enough for me to buy and sometimes i had newer scenes but i always like use them for for a while sometimes sometimes i'd sample them and then i'd sell them away to like uh, try new stuff and and so on and uh, my, after my first trip to Su uh, super booth in berlin you know like the the convention where uh, there are so many uh, vendors of synths and after seeing so many people make music with those crazy little things i mean i'm <laughs> officially like a uh, guest like that's yeah. how do you say it uh, the gear the, the acquisition syndrome yeah guess. for life i mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think my room is going to be full of synths again i mean i have all three volkas now not all three volkas but i have the keys the sample and the kick Mm -hmm. And now I'll have the Terapsid and the Minitor. And uh, I mean, it's more than you need to make music, but I mean, it's the way I'll make music from now on. So really looking forward to completing that setup. And I mean, after a while, after using uh, so many plugins uh, and having so much choice <laughs> with anything you need, like you have any instrument you may need in virtual, in virtual form and any effect you may need and uh, everything... Uh, I realized that I was, uh, I mean, it's, uh, how do you say it? Uh, with, with so many options, you actually lose options because you you, you, you think with, stu with, stuff, with stuff so much that you don't make music anymore, yeah. at least. I mean, there are people who do, but I get so carried away with the little knobs on everything or which synth to, to use out of the 20 since I have that uh, I've decided to go fully uh, hardware and try to make everything that way from now. And I'll see how it works. Hopefully it will work. Yeah, I can totally relate to that. And that seems to be a theme that comes up with almost everybody I talk to these days is that when there's too many choices, because it was always the thing we wanted back in the old days, right? Where we yeah. wanted 
every sound possible because then you can make、mm. any kind of song you want. And now I can finally see my creative vision.、Mm. But you're so right that like all of that just kind of leads you to just tinkering around with things, loading up、yeah. a new plugin, and then oh, let's see what the effects are in it. And just you're just exploring almost without really doing much. So yeah, the, the idea is to、uh, for me to make a small setup of like、uh, like six、uh, instruments. For now, it's the Volkas and the Minotaur and the Therapsid, and maybe I'll add another one, and that will be everything I'll use. I won't use anything except for that, and I'm planning to record it directly into the mixer,、um, mm -hmm. and maybe even do stereo summing、uh, analog in the mixer,、right. not use the door the door at all. And maybe I'll do multi-track recording in the door and then mix it in in the box. But either way, like no、uh, additional virtual instruments and stuff. And I'll see if that plan will work out, make me more productive, maybe. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun, and it,、yeah. it it'll like、uh, force you to sort of live with how it happens in real life. Exactly. Where you, where、yeah. you get what you get, <laughs> you know, especially if you sum it. You know, to stereo from the mixer. Yeah, not sure how that will work out, but、uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it will be a good thing. I don't know. Yeah, you probably find、try. yourself、uh, finding creative new solutions. Maybe I'll go full full circle. You know, like、uh, now I'm thinking that this is the best idea ever, and then I'll be like, oh man, I need plugins, and then I'll go back to all the plugins that I always use. So <laughs> yeah, who knows? You gotta wonder if that's coming in this whole like community. <laughs>、yeah. Because like right now we're definitely in this hardware boom, where everything、mm. is coming out hardware, and it's it's very difficult not to just jump at every new thing that comes、yeah. out. Th this、exactly. new boxes and gears and the, the Electron Digitac just came out,、mm. and that thing looks great. And the Peak by Novation, and you're just like, oh my god, like there's so much fun stuff. Yeah, we're being bombarded <laughs> by great new instruments. Yeah, it's a little bit of like. Golden age. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if in a couple of years we're gonna be like ah, but you know, all that's in my laptop. <laughs> we'll、uh, yeah. be back. <laughs> no, the the twenty ten is will be the new eighties、uh, yeah. in twenty thirty. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're just in a big circle all the time. Yep. <laughs> so you've been doing the bedroom producers blog since two thousand nine. I read. That's yeah. I think it's twenty two thousand nine. I mean.、Uh, Yeah, I think that's correct.、Uh, but it wasn't.、Uh, it wasn't like、uh, very. I wasn't very very active in the beginning. It was maybe one post per month back then,、mm -hmm. and、uh, it was something I did purely for fun. I mean, I still do it for fun, but it's also like now、uh, I have、uh, sort of an obligation to the readers, and、uh, it also makes some money. So it's also a job in a way, but it's fun. But in the beginning, it was just a blog for for per, for the purpose of blogging. It was actually it started because I、uh, discovered I started discovering the whole、uh, door plugin software thing, and then I、uh, was. Obviously, looking for freeware plugins that I would use myself, and I looked online for lists of、uh, good freeware plugins, and、uh, it was relatively hard to to find、uh, lists that、uh, were up to date, but、mm. included only the best stuff. You could find the list, for example, K KVR. The forum is amazing. Yeah, it, it, it has the largest database of all plugins, I think. But、uh, you would、uh, still have to go through all of them and to find the ones you like. So I would go through like all the plugins I could find, and then mainly as a reminder for for myself, I'd write a list of the plugins I liked and publish into online. And then after some time,、uh, those those、uh, articles were、uh, started showing up on Google. So other people started coming, and then the whole blog thing became. Uh, started to make sense, and、uh, so it grew on from then and from there, and yeah, became. I I like to think about it、uh, like、uh, more of an online magazine in a way than just a blog, because I have people who also write. So yeah, it, I'm hoping it will grow a bit more from now on as well. But yeah, that's how it started. So that's cool. It was really, in a lot of ways, something for yourself to gather everything and keep、yeah. track of. 
what was good and what was worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. I found the same thing um, looking for plugins, you know, free plugins, especially when I, when I was in the earlier days of doing all this stuff. And it was, you could find stuff all over the place, but a lot of it was, like you said, out of date or it was just kind of like the biggest piece of garbage plugin. Like, why would you <laughs> want this on your computer taking up even one byte of space? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but... Um, it's nice to have something like what you've got where it's like, these have been vetted, these have been tested, where they're kind of worth your time. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, still somewhat rare to find uh, reviews of freeware stuff. I mean, everyone reviews uh, the hardware mm -hmm. stuff and there are, of course, other people other than myself who, re who review freeware, but uh, it's harder to find. So when I, for example, when I write uh, article, the news articles about mm -hmm. uh, releases such as your uh, Rex, uh, then I also try to not make it just a copy paste of uh, the press release or whatever, but I also, whenever I can, I like, uh, before writing the article, I open it, I play with it for a while, maybe test it for a day if I have the chance, and then let the users know if, if it's, in my opinion, good. I mean, it, it maybe someone in life will like it even if I don't, but I just share my opinion about it. So yeah, I try to do, to do that. Do that. Yeah, I think that's nice because sometimes there can be like just, there's so much news, right? And there's so much stuff always coming out that if it's just a bombardment of, like you said, the press release, yeah, it, it gets a little dry, a little stale. But it's nice mm. that you take the time to sort of explore things a little bit, you know, and let people know like, oh, this is, this is actually kind of cool. There's something nice about this. It's worth your time. Yeah, it it's, uh, saves uh, the time for people who read uh, the blog. I mean, mm -hmm. But my favorite favorite uh, thing to do is when I discover a freebie that hasn't been announced anywhere yet. Sometimes I have I receive a tip from a reader, or sometimes a developer uh -huh. lets me know, and that's the best feeling. You know, it's like it brings out the journalist in me who has this exclusive bit of info. Yeah. So it's a rare occurrence, but when I do it, I feel really good. Yeah. When I publish <laughs> the hot news about a freeware release. Right. You've got the scoop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Do you have a journalist background? Uh, well, uh, my family on my dad's side, they're all journalists. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not officially a journalist, but I, I mean, it's, how do you say it? It's in my genes, I guess. I don't yeah. know. I, I, ever since I was a little kid, I made like, uh, with a friend, we made like, uh, it was part of a, uh, uh, we were doing it for fun, like making the little paper magazines for inventing news or whatever. Uh, and then uh, at some point, at some point, I, I started learning a bit of uh, stuff about web design, and I uh, it was like uh, I, I definitely had to make a blog because I, I just wanted to to write about stuff. And so yeah, one thing led led to another, and here I am with a blog. That's pretty cool. So this is, in a lot of ways, a combination of some of your passions that you've had. Yeah, three three age. passions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's music, uh, journalism, and I mean, blogging isn't journalism, but it's close in ways yeah. to it. And web design. It's also one thing that uh, that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of three things I I like doing. I'm finding that it seems when that happens for people, it, it sort of becomes like the magic thing for them where they yeah. sort of find their voice when it's a, and often it's a lot of things that start, they started out with as a little kid, like you said, like doing, um, you know, little news articles with friends and stuff like that, uh, magazines. I yeah, think yeah. Um, it's cool that, and you, you can often trace it back to the very early to days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, when you do something that you re really like, I mean, there's an old old saying. I'm not, I'm not sure if I remember who said it, but uh, when you're doing something you like, when you're working on something you like, it's not work in the yeah. sense that it's like uh, tough work. So yeah, the, the only thing that uh, that I can't manage is uh, time. You know, I, mm -hmm. I'm I suck at organizing my day and. Uh, so I take on so many things I'd like to do 
that in the, in the end there's a possibility of not actually doing anything. So I, uh, one thing I really need to improve and do better is like uh, making a plan for the week and then, st then sticking to the plan, not doing anything else. So, right, right. Because there are so many, there are so many other things that you can do and that I'd uh, like to do. You know, I, I also started uh, making uh, hardware. Uh, video reviews of hardware stuff it's something i really like because i'm also uh into videography i mean i'm a big uh, movie fan and um, so recording videos is also something uh, that i always wanted to do but in the end uh my day consists of uh, writing recording videos editing answering answering emails looking for a new freeware stuff to write about and then you i mean you can't yeah possibly do it all so yeah i also have to limit the the, the amount of stuff that i want to do yeah well there are so many fun things to get involved with in the world today <laughs> yeah I, for example i i, I re literally have no idea how you've managed to make those 150 uh, racks and still be a, you're you're an educator right you have like a full-time yeah. job Right. And you also run a website, and you also make uh, commercial packs, not just the free ones. So hats off to you. I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm not sure how that works. For well, real. it's funny that you say that because I was just I, one of the things I wanted to ask you is how do you stay on top of your blog so much? I don't. I <laughs> don't. I mean, you're very consistent, though. I mean, you're you're always putting stuff out. I mean, uh, I I don't even know how often. It seems like at least a couple times a day. And, well, uh, I mean, it, it writing these articles, the news stuff, became second nature because I see it, I see the plugin, I download it, I try it, I, I post about it. That's not a problem, but uh, the, the one thing I haven't done in a while is make a list of uh, cool plugins. Other than mm -hmm. the, I'm not sure if you've seen those... Uh, like top 50 or top 25 lists that, that they do in December. Uh, that cover like the whole uh, year of uh, yeah. freeware stuff. Those are cool. Those are great. But I haven't, uh, for example, done a list of freeware chorus plugins. I don't know. It's it's on. I have a huge to do list of <laughs> of stuff that I need to write, and I can't manage to do it because uh, I'm blogging about the the new stuff. You know. Uh -huh. So that's that's the part that I want to go back to because it's uh, how the blog actually started, and mm -hmm. it's what people want to see the most. So yeah. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. I mean, to have that at the end of the year, I see, you see you've got it, you know, the top 25 VST, free VSTs of 2016 and all that. And because there's so much that comes out, it's nice to have somebody that will yeah, yeah. just, you know, tell you like, look, this is where it's worth your time and this is, you know, don't worry about everything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are great. Uh, the lists are, are cool, yeah. I, I also enjoy making them because it's also, as I said before, it's helpful for, for me because I go through all the news articles I did once again. I uh, check out the stuff, see what I liked, what I didn't, and then literally like uh, download the stuff that I forgot to, to keep on my hard drive or whatever, and then I'm done with that year for, for you know, the, the stuff mm -hmm. I'd like to have, so yeah. It's yeah, useful. That's, that's not you just going through 25 VSTs either. That's you sorting through probably everything, possibly hundreds, yeah, and yeah. just picking those best ones. So there's just quite a time commitment to that. Yep. I found, I'm, and I wonder how you handle this, because um, I have to imagine that your VST folders on your computer, when you open up whatever DAW you're using, I have to imagine that that list runs pretty long. <laughs> well, well, it uh, it definitely used to, but uh, as I said, I, I'm tr trying to limit my options and to become more uh, efficient. So it's actually very short now. I I, th mm -hmm. I keep everything uh, categorized. I have like uh, a VST plugin folder folder on a separate drive. I don't uh, use the C drive. I'm on Windows, so I uh -huh. uh, have a separate uh, drive for, for plugins, and then I have three folders like instruments, effects, and utilities, and then inside those folders I have a folder for, uh, I don't know, EQs, compressors, everything is categorized like that, and every folder contains 
a maximum of, of like two or three plugins. I oh, mean, yeah? it's still it's still a bunch of plugins uh, when you look at it, but uh, it used to be like 12 compressors, uh, 15 EQs, but now it's much shorter. So the thing is, I, I tried to make it as like uh, streamlined and efficient as possible so that I can use the tools uh, I want, I need, and not be like tempted by a new plugin that I downloaded yesterday. So, oh, let, let's see what this knob does and how does this sound. But because I'm making music at that moment and not like testing plugins, that's what I need to do. So, yeah. the idea is to to make it like really efficient and uh, use the tools that I know. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and being a gear uh, acquisition syndrome uh, victim, <laughs> uh, <laughs> victim it, definitely. It, it, yeah, it it is. Uh, it was a learning experience for me to to come to that conclusion that you don't need them all. You just need need a few. And uh, the music is the most important part of the process, not the the processing plugins. Right, right. That's a great point about um, you're actually making music now, not testing plugins. Yeah, to differentiate no. those two activities. I think is important because I I know I tend to mix that all together, and uh, yeah, I have an idea for music. And I'm like, ooh, let's see how this plugin sounds, and then there goes the idea half the time. <laughs> yeah, no, it works for some people. I mean, when you when you watch uh, the I don't know the future music master classes or you know the 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 videos where where different artists uh, show their workflow workflows. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people who who don't have a problem with that i mean they, they use all sorts of stuff and make amazing music with it but my i i'm uh, the kind of person who gets so easily distracted by stuff that uh, as you said i uh, there goes the idea you know i start working on a track i make a loop and then i put like uh, god knows how many synths or effects and then i'm not making music anymore i'm just tinkering with plugins so <laughs> yeah it reminds me sometimes um my father is a great collector of tools <laughs> mm -hmm. and and not not from a perspective of like you know this is an interesting tool from you know 1912 it's just like he's just got lots of screwdrivers and saws <laughs> and you know he's just got tons of the stuff and he he knows where everything is and what to do with it and but if i go down in that basement and i go looking for like a screwdriver or something <laughs> you know like the sheer enormity of the collection overwhelms yeah, endless, everything endless choices yeah yeah and i've felt like my plug-in folders were getting like that where mm. i just i knew i had cool stuff but i open it up I'm like oh my god it's just like a never-ending what list. the hell is this yeah yeah and i actually just got rid of them all at one point cool a few years back um i just i was it was really like when i first was getting kind of settled that i was going to be using ableton live for a while because mm -hmm. i'd bounced around through a couple different daws that's another thing you can bounce around with too it's just all the different daws yeah, yeah yeah which one is the best which one sounds right. the best and, and they, they all long. sound the same yeah yeah <laughs> and then you start reading things online that one sounds this way and it's just like oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when i finally got to that point where i was like all right i like this this is where i'm gonna be working i decided to get rid of most of what I had as far as plugins go. Because f for one, I mean, in all honesty, a lot of them were obtained in nefarious ways, <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh. in the dark corners <laughs> of the internet. <laughs> Confession time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, you know, I, I found that I guess I'm not the only one that does that, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was, uh, uh, most of them were from that or they were just a lot of free stuff. And, and um, I was finding that and I wanted to use live to, to play live, you know, Ableton Live to play mm -hmm. live. So yeah, yeah. I was getting the most crashes when I'd use third party stuff, free oh, stuff, that's, and especially yeah, that's the crack stuff. And so, then you're like, oh, which one of these uh, 50 plugins caused the crash? How, oh, yeah. uh, you know, so yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you know right away, but other times you got to really <laughs> <laughs> hunt it down. So mm -hmm. I, I said, look, you know, it was like a talk I'd have to myself, like intervention, you know, like a, like a drug addict yeah. or something, but the gear acquisition syndrome addict. Uh, anonymous <laughs> uh, plug-in owners. Yeah, right. <laughs> I had to put myself through the 10-step program or the 12-step program, and um, I, I decided, look, 
this software, Ableton Live, has everything. It's got a version of everything, pretty much. You know, there's a handful of things, maybe like an auto tune or something it doesn't have. But um, I was like, you know, why don't I learn how to use these first? And yeah. that was a, a big move. I didn't realize how big at the time, but it, it allowed me to actually get to know a software. Kind of like mm -hmm. you would when you, when I was younger, if I got some piece of gear, whatever it was, it was a guitar, it was a four track tape recorder. Like I bought that and I can't return it and I can't sell it on eBay because that doesn't exist yet. So I'm stuck with this thing and I'm going to have to learn how to use it. I'm going to have to learn how to like it. <laughs> mm, yep. And now I think we don't have to learn to like things and learn how to use things. We can just kind of either get rid of it or delete it or, yeah but but the the truth is that one one plugin or instrument or whatever that you know how to use is uh, uh so much more powerful that you have than having like 20 that you don't know how to use because that one that that is like uh your go-to tool is is the one thing you need for yeah uh, so yeah, yeah it's so true and uh, uh, the thing you said about going to, to Ableton, I was actually tempted. Uh, I was o obviously al always tempted by Ableton Live, but uh, I was uh, tempted by going to Reason, uh, mm -hmm. to use Reason because they were it's limited to internal like uh, stuff, and now they've introduced VST yes. plugin support. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <Isn't> no, that <laughs> funny? wouldn't that be funny if that new feature becomes <laughs> a turn off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one uh, made uh, music with a reason ever after that because uh, everyone's right. played with plugins. Uh, that's just yeah. too much now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've been, uh, you know, reason is definitely um, enticing for a lot of reasons. I, I'm pretty sure, didn't they do Ableton Link with it too now? Yeah. Um, which was awesome, you know, to see like the companies working together like that. Mm. Um, yeah, I've, but I wonder, like you said, that's really funny. But yeah. it's it does seem like, you know, the people that I know that use it love it and it's their thing. You know, that it's and it's that virtual look to it, the kind of real world look mm. is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I tr I I tried it uh, briefly and I loved it, but I'm not sure the, the something was bugging me mm -hmm. in a reason. I I can't remember what. Maybe it was the the mix the the multi-track view or something i mean whatever uh with those uh the most important thing is the, to find a door that works best for uh, your workflow and uh, that you understand uh easily yeah. and uh, ev every pe p person will pick an, a different door i mean uh someone works best with live someone works best with something else for me it's studio one because uh oh, i yeah. found simply yeah i simply found it uh to be the most in intuitive one for me i mean mm -hmm. it's it's as good as any other though i mean but it worked uh, the best for me for some reason and i use that and i use mule lab it's uh, i'm not sure if you know about it it's, it's like this very small project but it has like a small group of people who like it it's uh, fully modular uh and cool if you want to experiment with like modular software since so yeah i use that for sound design and studio one for mixing and that, that's it so that's cool, and Studio One's you know pretty new on the market. A couple of years, yeah, relatively, right? yeah. yeah. I, I think yeah, it's like more than a couple of years now, but it's maybe the newest yeah. though still. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're they're doing a good job. I think. I mean, I mean, I'm not the kind of guy who follows the like user forums. I, I'm not sure what the public opinion is about Studio One. I, I mean, I just like using it. So yeah. I don't know. I think it's a success. I've never tried success, it myself. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it's going to take a lot to pull me out of where I am now just because yeah, for, for, I know it, you know, and that, like you said, mm -hmm. that's so valuable to just know how to use a thing. I think there's absolutely no reason for you to change from Ableton Live like ever because you know, once you like learn to use it and you don't need any additional features or I mean there's no reason to to try anything else even uh, and uh, for performers I I mean you you you're the you're you like performing live and stuff mm -hmm. I think that live is the best for it so yeah, yeah I you, I picked Presonus uh, Studio One because it's uh, I I used it for mixing mainly, so no no uh -huh. live performance stuff. So yeah, yeah, 
Well, that's good. That'll be good for、uh, your new hardware setup that you're working yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Am I going to see a change to bedroom producers now? With,、uh, uh, you mean with the hardware、focus? stuff? Yeah. <laughs> well,、um, no, I'll stay true to the, to the software stuff, but I'm like、uh, trying to add some hardware coverage. I, I mean, uh, I, uh, one thing I started doing is visiting those shows, you know, the, the, uh, the biggest shows about music、uh, equipment.、Mm-hmm. There's the music method.、Uh, NAM and、uh, the relatively new、uh, super booth in Berlin. So I go there with a camera and try to capture some of the most interesting stuff for my YouTube channel. So, yeah, I'll, I'll keep doing that for sure. Yeah, it looked like a super booth is pretty exciting this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's,、uh, I mean, if you're、uh, a synth geek, that, that place is like a, a, a dreamland, literally. Yeah. They, there's so much stuff. Yeah, yeah. Candy store for sure. Because it's, I mean, it's crazy. There's so much noise. You know, as you walk through the booths, everyone is playing their synths, and there's a bunch of people like、uh, performing at the same time, but.、Uh, It's so i n v i t i mean, it's not the kind of noise that、uh, pushes your weight. It just draws you in、yeah. to, to hear and check out all the little things. And、uh, this year it was especially cool because uh, uh, I think that the companies、uh, recognized that it will be a, a hot event this year. So there were new releases from、uh, Novation, the、uh, released Peak and cir- Circuit uh, uh, Peak. How is, it, how is it called? At, at yeah, the, the Super the Booth. Yeah, Circuit. Yeah, I know. And, what you're、uh, about. Yeah, and there w a s there were a few more、uh, completely new releases at the show, which is a, a bit rare nowadays to have so、mm-hmm. many new synths released at, at、uh, one show. so Yeah, well, I think it it seems like it's really coming up in the whole community as just、mm. a really like nice trade show, I guess you call it. Um, yeah, yeah, but it's not so much of a trade show. It's, mo- it's uh, like, uh, okay, a trade show, but it's also a, a gathering of synth maniacs. Yeah. So,、right. yeah, it's the perfect、uh, place for, for new releases, actually. Yeah, and those are, those are cool environments when you get,、mm. you get to be with a whole bunch of people that have the same thing going on. I, mean, I see it like when I go to, like, say, like an Ableton Live user group. Or, or even like, you know, playing in bands when like you're at a show and it's like this whole scene is together and everyone's there to see all the bands and they're happy.、Um, and I, I was telling you earlier, but I think before we started talking about how my wife is into,、uh, has a gaming store where they do the board <laughs> yeah, games, yeah. Dungeons and、yeah. Dragons, Magic and all that. So they go to all these conventions all the time, whether it's Comic Con or、um, There's, there's a lot of like more specific ones that they go to, and sometimes they're a lot smaller. Gen Con is the big one they go to. But <laughs> I've gone with her to a few of them, and it's really cool to see people that are just, and especially with, I think, and I think synthesizer people probably fall into this too, but definitely the gamers, <laughs> they're kind of、uh, a little on the outskirts of.、Uh, Society, you know, they're,、yeah. not, they're not your mainstream everyday person、mm. <laughs> a lot of times, just like、yeah. us synth people are kind of a little weird, yeah, <laughs> yeah for、But、sure. When they're all together, they're all in their everyone's in their element, you know. And it was the same、mm-hmm. way playing in bands as a teenager, where you know, kind of like uh, the kids that were going to these shows were not the main, like、uh, typical popular kids all the time. But when we were at our shows, we were that was our thing, yeah, you know, yeah, we were yeah. in our element. It was like we were at the football game and we were the quarterback, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> except yeah. it was you know, at like a punk rock show in some、yeah. uh. Hole in the wall somewhere. Yeah. Well, of course, when, you, when, you, when you're、uh, surrounded by people who, who like the same things as you do, you're, no, you're not a lonely geek anymore. You're like、yeah. a part of a huge group of geeks. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's always cool. Yeah. It's like empowering, inspiring. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a lot of uh, good. Uh, I, I'd really love to get out to some of them. It's a shame I'm, I'm on the other side of the ocean sometimes. Uh, yeah, but Nam, where,、uh, where exactly are you?、You're、I'm in, in New、uh, York, Long Island. Yes.、Yeah. So, so Nam is relatively. That's LA. Yeah. Yeah, but if I can go from Europe, then you can <laughs> go from New York. <laughs> nah, it's true. It's true. I'd love to get to Loop to.、Um, uh, yeah, is, it's, in, it's in Berlin, yeah? Yeah. 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 Have you been? 
Did you go? No. Uh, no? No, I, I was actually in Berlin at that time last year, but the, when I realized that the loop is uh, happening, they already sold all the tickets yeah. and it wasn't possible to go, but maybe this year. Yeah, it fills up quick, I guess. And uh, yeah, I think part of the design is not to let it get too out of control. Yeah, to make to to make it keep it small. Yeah, yeah, keep it kind of intimate because I guess, especially if you've got like all these little workshops that work really nice in small groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as like a teacher (laughs) myself, like it's a lot different working with a handful of people than forty. You know, where you're not working with individuals anymore; you're just a crowd of people. Whereas when it's ten people, it's like, okay, hey, how you doing? I'm Brian. You know, yeah. and, and like every, you get to know people a little more. So, that's that's a cool. Uh, that's one I'd like to get to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I always wondered uh, how cool it would be to go to like a uh, sc- type of school that would teach you uh, stuff about doors and uh, Ableton. Mm-hmm. So, I mean. Um, and uh, how do people? I mean, do do kids go there uh, because they? I mean, do they choose, or is it like uh, you're no good for school, and so the parents send you there? Or I mean, h- how is uh, what's the profile of of the the kids going there? Do you so, have like do you get super talented like young producers, or do you have like uh, kids who aren't really interested and go there to go to just do something? Well, I think there might be a little bit of both. But yeah. I think with music anyway, it's the kind of thing where I think people have this thing in their head like you have to kind of uh, like know it a little bit or have maybe even it's you need a talent for it, which mm-hmm. I kind of disagree with personally. But I think it's it's not so much like um, I'm trying to think of something else like people might do. Um, it it's not as like a ra- something you randomly pick i feel because mm-hmm. you sort of like kind of feel like like i guess like if i give you a crayon and a piece of paper you can call yourself an artist no matter how it looks but yeah. if i give you a guitar like you're not a musician <laughs> until it st- it sounds like music yeah does maybe that make sense a, uh, maybe you're a noise artist <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> um i i don't know if that's a great comparison but no, but I, f- I, I get what you mean. Yeah, I mean it's uh, a, 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 anyone can do it, but uh, you you need to have interest for it in order to do it. I think. Yeah, I think it's it's the kind of thing I hear people say a lot. Like, oh, I have no musical talent. I, I hear people say mm-hmm. things like that a lot, and I I kind of like think that's funny to me because I don't think I did until I started learning music. You know, I I liked music growing up and, you know, listened to it and, you know, little things here and there. But like until I actually started playing it, you know, I had no idea what it was. I didn't know there were four beats and most in the bar (laughs) and things like that. Um, And you you can't even uh, like define musical talent because uh, how do you know that you have it or you don't before you try it? I mean, uh, the easiest thing to do is to sing and I, I, I sing terribly, but still I, th- I think I, I, I can make good music, you know. I mean, you have to yeah. try the whole process and uh, before you know if, if you're any good. And uh, most importantly, if, if you find it fun and if you think that you can express yourself through, through music. So, Yeah, I agree. And if you take something like being athletic, you know, mm. if you're fairly athletic, you can do all right in just about any sport you get picked on in gym yeah. class to play. <laughs> you'll, you'll be okay at it you can run you can catch things and you'll be all right but music is a little it takes a little foundation building i guess yeah you have to love it uh in order to do it that's the you got to get through that kind thing. of suffering hard part where everything sounds terrible your yeah. fingers hurt and your mm. hands hurt from because they're not used to it so i think like th- there are definitely kids that like don't have um the interest in school but have the interest in music and that's what they want to do and and a lot of times those kids are like you know you really see like a side of them you didn't know existed where they're they're hungry for it they're hungry for the music yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's easy like if you're there like me if i'm their english teacher and they're not doing well in english class it's easy to like think in your head this kid's lazy 
This <laughs> kid doesn't like. He has no initiative, no motivation. <laughs> Well, yeah. maybe just in that one thing that he doesn't care about. <laughs> yeah, But yeah. when you find the thing that the kid cares about, you know, it's it's sometimes surprises you. Yeah. For me, that's yeah, sorry, a, but oh I, yeah, sorry. I, I'm just want to check if I got it wrong. So you you teach Ableton live, like, uh, and you also are an English teacher, right? Or am I yeah. completely confused here? Yeah. No, I, I high school English is like the real job. You know, that's where I'm a mm -hmm, grown up. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you, and yeah 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 cool and, and you also teach uh, Ableton Live to to your students here yeah I have a small group that I do that with after school um, and then I've got um, I do it with Berkeley Online mm -hmm. and then I've done lessons I've haven't been doing too many lessons lately just because time is hard mm -hmm. to find for that um, but yeah so and it, but it's a lot of like almost like classroom situations even if it's like a user group or something it's it's kind of like i'm doing a lecture yeah or a demonstration and it's it's a it's a big difference in like student attitude you know because you yeah, have yeah. to you have to go to my english class you needed to graduate <laughs> you have no choice so some of them yeah. are just drooling on themselves half asleep no matter what i do but when you <laughs> you know when you go to like if you decide you're into music and you want to go to one of these things, like people are excited. Yeah, you'll They love want it. to yeah. be there. That's cool. No one's falling oh. asleep. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like a great class. I I, I didn't uh, ever go to such a class, but I'd love to. No, another thing uh, that's uh, so cool about uh, these classes, I mean, I'm not talking from experience because I never tried it, but uh, I think that it's so much better to learn things. I mean, okay, it's great to learn things from the thousands of tutorials out there on youtube mm -hmm. i mean we're blessed to live in an age when uh, you can literally like type uh, into google something you want to learn and then learn it but i think that uh, going through a class for example having uh, you as a teacher uh, for ableton live that um, you learn it so much i think faster and uh, it's I, i i'm i'm imagining that it's a much better uh, way to do it i don't know i mean I I'd, I'd have to try it to to know, but I think that it's a really cool cool uh, way to learn stuff. It is. It's it's still far superior than YouTube. And don't get yeah. me wrong. I mean, most of what I learned, I got off YouTube. And uh, I mean, even just recently, I'm I'm like so proud of myself for this. I I uh, I fixed the gas tank on my lawnmower. <laughs> oh, and that was through yeah. YouTube. Yeah, it was leaking yeah. one day. It was just like dripping, and I was like, oh great, I don't know how to fix motors. You know, <laughs> I'm not a mechanic by any means like um but I you know I got on YouTube I figured it out ordered the part on eBay and uh yeah. saved myself probably $200 on a new lawnmower oh, but cool. if I had someone with me that knew how to do it you know we could have just talked I could ask questions but instead I'm sifting through a large selection of videos yeah. searching to for the best tutorial the yeah. yeah 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 and um It's always the best when you find the best tutorial and it's like an eight-year-old kid. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who is killing it and, yeah. and you're learning from him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, thanks, little buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a young guy. I don't know how old he was, but he was definitely young doing mm. the lawnmower. And I was like, huh, all right. You know, you can learn from everybody. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but there's some, like... Like I said, if I was with, like, say, a mechanic or a, a, some kind of repairman that knows what he's doing, it would have been a lot quicker and uh, a lot smoother. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, it's definitely, there's something to that. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, it's an amazing time. If you want to learn mm -hmm. how to do something, it's a few searches and clicks away. Yeah. I mean, of course, the, they're... Uh thousands of tutorials that are so close to you so you have to still go through all of them to find uh, the info you need but yeah we couldn't definitely do that like 20 years ago you have to buy yeah. magazines or books or uh, go to a stu studio to be uh teached by someone and um yeah, yeah this is crazy uh, the the amount of, of information that we have for free nowadays so yeah i'm finding a lot of like really nice stuff happening lately where people are not it's not even just like how to use the compressor but it's more like uh like a process creative process like theory philosophy and mm -hmm. um workflow stuff that i find really useful 
like people yeah. just explaining what they're doing. I, I'm a big fan of the fact TVs against the clock. Have oh, uh, it's yeah, it's uh, when you when you where you have like uh, thirty no less ten, 10 minutes, minutes to make. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And you get there, to watch there was this guy who killed it. I'm I'm not uh, sh- I I don't uh, know his name, but he was a trap producer, mm-hmm. and uh, it was amazing. The, the, when you just see how s- some guy sits in front of, I mean, I, here I am building my uh, hardware rig to to like um, be more efficient with music making, and this guy sits in front of his laptop and does everything on the keyboard and uh, the trackpad. I I can't stand using a trackpad, yeah. and he made uh, like a, the dopest beat in ten minutes uh, on a laptop screen, and I'm like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you you see all sorts of workloads from from other people, and you know that. It wouldn't all work for you, but it's inspiring to know uh, that we're all different and we can make great stuff with different workloads. So, and you also get inspired to do your own thing. So, yeah, and it can be done. It's mm. it's and some some of the people will like talk you through what they're doing a little bit. I, I like yeah. that a lot. But I think part of it is that imposed deadline. You know, the ten minutes. Mm. I've been. Lightly experimenting with some live streaming, and I was making a a sound pack. Um, I forget which one I was doing, but I've kind of decided like now when I do my sound packs, I think I'm going to do them live because mm. I, the editing of the videos is, uh, you know, it's just another step that gets in my yeah, way yeah. if I want to be productive. But at so the do, do you live end. stream? Sorry, uh, do you live stream on, on YouTube or something like Twitch or? I've only done YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I'll I've have all, to I'm, check it out once. I'm talking a handful of times right now. You know, I'm mm. I'm new to it. I'm getting just trying to get into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I know like you can do it through Facebook, Twitch. Um, I, I'll experiment with Facebook. Um, I did a a live stream with Ask Audio. Oh, cool! They did. They do like these master class things mm-hmm. um, for their like academy with all the tutorials, and um, that was a lot of fun. And it was on Facebook, and like when I was done, it said it had all these views, which I think really referred mostly to how many people looked at it, not necessarily mm-hmm. watched it for the hour mm-hmm. or two that I was doing it, but still, like Facebook's, you know, got that great engagement where it just pops right yeah, up. Yeah. Um. But what I was going to say about the live stream thing was after I made this collection of sounds, it was, it was the waterfall sounds I did, the 100, mm-hmm. 150. After I finished that, I, I only had about like 10 minutes before I had to leave the house. So I'd been on there for like almost an hour and someone wrote in, okay, now you got to make a track with that. And I was like, no, nah, I can't do that. But then I was like, <laughs> why not? Let's try. Yeah. <laughs> and the pressure... You know, for one, like people were watching and I couldn't like delete this. I mean, there Mm -hmm. weren't a ton of people, but you know, there were enough and I couldn't delete it. And I also knew I had to be out of here in a few minutes, Mm -hmm. but it made me just say, okay, that's a cool beat. Cool. All right. That's a cool baseline. Cool. And just move on, move on. Don't look back. Just go forward. And um, I think that's one of the things we have trouble that we're kind of talking about today is that Mm -hmm. when you start analyzing everything you let's turn this knob let's try a different chorus plug-in i got 17 let's see how they all sound (laughs) yeah (laughs) then like you're and then go through all the presets yeah yeah uh yeah uh what you're saying uh, reminded me um about two things but i forgot one of them but one of them is (laughs) that uh you know the guy from youtube the his goal called andrew huang yeah or Huang, and he did exactly. I, I mean, he does what you you, you said just now. He literally re- released a bunch of tracks, uh, and take. I mean, obviously, he put some time into them, and they, they sound cool. But he doesn't take like ages to do it. He he mm-hmm. uh, makes an album in like uh, a week or something. I'm I'm not sure, and uh, I think that's uh, the best way to do it. And yeah, the other thing was um, that I wanted to to say that uh, is that. Uh, what we are doing now, because we have all these uh, options and all this gear inside our, our homes, is uh, something that uh, was previously handled by uh, like a team of people. You had the yeah. uh, like 
composers or you had the, like the band the rec- the mixing engineer the mastering engineer and uh, a bunch of other people who worked on a project and nowadays we are doing it i mean us bedroom producers we do all of it by ourselves and then it's so easy to get distracted by those parts of the cro- process that aren't the most creative i mean the part where you where you make the music is the most important and then you should uh, at least from my experience try to spend uh, at uh, the least time possible on doing the mixing and mastering uh, if you're not doing like a commercial release or whatever i mean if you're just making music then do make music you know yeah i was talking to a buddy of mine the other night about this where you know say you're like recording your guitar or something like you're the engineer you're at the computer with one hand you got your guitar in the other hand you're you're now moving the microphone in the right place you got the headphones you're listening you're trying to strum you're recording you're playing back and you, you know, there's all of these different things going in that are taken away from your performance. Like, because yeah. what about the performance? That's kind of important too. Mm. And um, I, in a lot of my experience playing in bands, the first take or two of a song was usually the, like the best in a lot yeah, of ways. Like, I agree. We would capture the energy of the song. There was like a, a, a passion behind it or something where it was just, it was inspired, we were excited, yay. But then when you go back to take 10, and you're like, Mm. all right, we slowed down a little bit, we gotta get that right this time. And Mm. like the performance just isn't there. It might even be played better, but it's like, yeah, but I love the way the first one sounds. We sound like all pumped and psyched about it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So there's that's where where the experienced engineer comes in and tells you record this like uh, again and again and again. Mm -hmm. But when you do it all by yourself, then it's so easy to become like tired of it. So uh, one thing I watched was, uh, I mean, obviously one of the biggest uh, rock hits ever is Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. Mm -hmm. And uh, I watched, uh, there's... uh, a ma- master class by Butch, how do you say it, Butchwig or Butchwig, yeah. the, the producer? Butchwig. Yeah, Butchwig, who, who talks about uh, how recorded, how they recorded it in his studio. And uh, I mean, everyone hated him uh, mm-hmm. uh, because he asked them to, to do like the song, uh, I, I don't know how many times, because he wanted to do like some crazy amount of multi tracked guitars and the, the vocals need to be recorded like from his vision like uh, 10 times or whatever to hear like 10 layers i'm not sure if i rem- remember c- correctly but it's something along those l- those lines and the band hated him but y- then you get the the smash hit that it is i yeah. mean i mean it's also about the song but it's it sounds so crazy i mean and powerful because i mean you have that guy who is who knows his job and pushes you to give your best even though you're tired of the song so yeah yeah it's nice it's nice to have somebody else tell you that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or, you know, that was it. That was the one, you know, because especially you get so critical of yourself and mm. sometimes the little cracks in your voice or the little speed up of the drummer are the exciting parts that really bring the emotion out. Yeah, exactly. But if you're being so critical, you can, you know, not see that and just hear in perfection. And I know I when I hear my own playing, I, I think a lot about like if I did it right. Whereas when I hear other people's music, especially like a recorded album, I'm not really listening to it like, mm. did they do this right? You know, did they yeah. mess up? Does this sound good? Like you kind of accept it as like, yeah, this is how it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's the, it's the author's choice. I mean, yeah. it's, you can't say if it's wrong or, or not, unless it's like uh, some terribly sounding mix, but a song is uh, what the author makes it, the artist, mm-hmm. not not the listener. So yeah, I agree completely. Yeah, and I guess these days too, <laughs> when uh, with like lo-fi sounds coming back and being more and more popular, yeah. it, to purposely make your song sound bad, you kind yeah. of assume like, you know, yeah, that's what the sound I wanted. I wanted it to sound like it came off a tape you know cassette tape that one in the washing machine (laughs) yeah yeah Uh, do you also have the thing where uh i mean i have a bunch of old projects on my hard drive that i never finished and then you know how at some point you're so tired of uh making a song that you don't even i mean you hit the play button and you're like uh 
you, you don't enjoy it at all. But yeah. then uh, when you listen to it after like a uh, year of, or two, it you're you're again like, yeah, this is so cool. I mean, yeah. uh, when you when you mix music and hear it too many times, you literally you can't mix it anymore. It it sounds like mm -hmm. rubbish. I mean, at some point, and then when you hear it after a long, long time, it gets that spark of inspiration again for me at least. So. Yeah, I I get that often actually because a lot of times I find myself overdoing things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> spending yeah. too much time with it. Uh, but uh, there's nothing I find like more satisfying than when I can sit down and record something and kind of like blast right through it, and by the time the song's done, it's still a new song to me. Oh yeah, and it's still exciting to hear. But sometimes yeah. you take your song you know and like you said it could be like a smash hit like smells like teen spirit mm -hmm. but i mean put on any song a hundred times in a row and like you don't want to hear it the hundred and first yeah, time yeah, anymore yeah. exactly so spending too much time like distorts your ability to judge it properly <clears throat> yeah it's such a difficult thing <laughs> making music <laughs> yeah <laughs> so well, much like mental <laughs> <laughs> interference <laughs> yeah but it's also so beautiful because we ob obviously still love doing it so yeah, yeah i mean it's it's tough but it's so great so yeah yeah it is it's that's i guess the magic of it that mm. if it was always perfect then it would kind of be what's the point and if it yeah, was always exactly. terrible it would be too frustrating <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's always searching for that time that when you can yeah. just get it well, listen, I want to be respectful of your time. I know it's a little bit later for you in Serbia, right? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, how, the time difference is, I think, eight uh, hours or maybe six hours. But yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. Sl sleepy time here. Yeah, I'd say so, because it's uh, about 5.30 in the evening here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's almost midnight here, so. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, but, uh, I, I mean, it was a... Uh, uh, very nice for me to talk to you and thanks again for the invitation and um, I mean uh, I, I'd have, I'll have to check out your previous podcast be because uh, this was so cool for me so yeah thanks for oh, having cool. me again yeah it's great to talk to you and I especially you know want to personally thank you for sharing all my stuff and then oh, you're to, welcome. to thank you again as like a reader of your website because you know, like we were saying earlier about um, the YouTube videos where there's a billion you got to sort through, you've done a lot of that hard work for us producers in finding the good plugins that are free instead of letting us search around and trial and error on yeah, every this, single one. That's nice to hear. So thanks for that. And yeah, I, I would also like to thank you for, I mean, uh, I know how it is when you uh, find a place where you can find a bunch of uh, good free stuff such as your rex so i'm sure that uh i mean i'm I, you definitely know the numbers but I, i'm guessing that like thousands and thousands of ableton live producers are like uh, making music with your stuff so i'd like to thank you in the name of them all for for what you're doing i mean ah, it's cool. really amazing to to read so much uh, so much free stuff so good job man thanks thanks thomas Slav. Well, I'm going to, we'll cut this off, then we'll say our goodbyes afterwards. Okay. But um, this has been a great talk with you. This is uh, Brian Funk. I'm here with Tomislav from bedroompreducersblog.com. And like I said earlier, it's a great resource if you're looking for um, the nice new gear that's coming out or a nice collection of uh, what the good free plugins are and reviews of gear. It's it's the place I've been going now. I I guess uh, at least most of the time. It, so probably close to the beginning, you know, because it's a great title you have, by the way, just bedroom producers oh. blog. Because I mean, that is something I'm pretty sure I found by typing in bedroom producer. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it's actually something I'm uh, thinking about changing because uh, whenever, oh, yeah. for yeah, when I go to these shows that I mentioned, like Music Messe, and people are like, "What's the website name?" and I'm like. Uh, bedroom producers blog i mean it's so long and uh, most of these guys are like what the hell is that you know so i'm thinking about changing it to bpb mac i already purchased the domain name uh -huh. so maybe 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 a change is coming maybe not uh, i'm okay. but yeah thanks well, you still got the i'm acronym. glad 
I'm glad that someone likes it. So <laughs> I do. It's it's to the point, and it's uh, you know, there's there's a large number of people in that role. Yeah, yeah, for, for sure. So you're definitely catering to a good crowd, an eager crowd. Yeah. So again, thanks so much for your time, and for everyone listening, please go check out the site. You will find some cool stuff for sure. And um, until next time, thanks a lot for listening. <laughs>